Good afternoon. I'm Greg Yankee, and I want to do something different, something I've never done before. Uh, I want to start recording book moments, and I'm very excited about this new book that I got. I want to hold this up here. You can see my face here, uh, and, and I'm in reverse here, but on the screen you can see the book is uh, The Devil and Karl Marx by Paul Kengor, Dr. Paul Kengor, he, who teaches at Grove City College. Um, I'm excited about this book because um, I it really is uh, supporting a lot of things that I've thought about for a long time over the past few years of teaching world history. Now, uh, in my lesson plans coming up, the unit that I just started in my regular world history class, I'm teaching about uh, well, the unit is called Absolutism and Revolution. And so it deals with the absolutist monarchs of Spain and France, Austria, uh, Prussia, Russia, uh, in that era of the 1600s and 1700s, all leading up to the French Revolution. Well, what's the tie-in? The tie-in really for this book, The Devil and Karl Marx and the French Revolution is something that I was thinking about today as I was teaching about Louis XIV and France. One of the things Louis XIV, um, one of the things he did as he was developing his absolutist monarchy is he recognized the importance of getting the support of the middle class. Uh, his, his idea of develop when he was developing his absolutist monarchy is that he needed to suppress the power of the nobles and keep them occupied. That was one of the things, one of the reasons that he, for example, built Versailles. And to keep the nobles occupied in these rituals uh, so that um, he could hire middle-class men to serve the purpose of being in tenants. They would collect his taxes, they would enforce his laws. Louis XIV saw it important to get the support of the middle class. And over the past few years, I've noticed, you know, as I've taught about the, the age of absolutism, uh, the French Revolution, and then Karl Marx, the reactions to the Industrial Revolution that we get with Karl Marx, uh, and others, that the middle class for Karl Marx is, is very much hated. Um, and this is interesting. I want to share one of my favorite quotes here. I hope this shows up since I'm recording the whole desktop here. This is, this is the quote of the day that I'm sharing for this book. Um, this is from Paul Kengor. He says, atheists, communists, and socialists have always mistakenly felt that the answers to man's miseries are found not in God, the existence of which they deny, but in economic materialism. It is so ironic that communists and socialists blast the wealthy for being allegedly obsessed with money and material things when, in fact, communists and socialists are obsessed with money and material things. So the reason I, I guess I think that's really an important quote um, is that that really, this is one of the concepts I explained to my kids. Once after the French Revolution, the nobility is done away with. In America, for example, it's in our constitution. We have no titles of nobility. So one of the things I explained to my students is, it's very, and it's very hard for them to understand. Upper class, middle class, lower class is not based on how much money you have but rather it's based on with the with the upper class of the nobility in Europe that those are people that whose wealth is based in land and agriculture but at at the um, at the coming of the industrial revolution the middle class is not making its money in land and agriculture but it's making its money through through manufacturing and commerce and trade so for Karl Marx, um, 
when the nobility essentially they 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 get out um, out financed by the the rising middle class. Oftentimes, the rising middle class could end up because of their investments, because of their wealth and in, in manufacturing, they could become richer than the nobility, whose wealth was merely based in land and farming. So. So this is interesting. For Marx, the enemy is is not the nobility because the nobility has been done away with throughout most of throughout most of uh, Europe, and certainly in America. The enemy, the next enemy, then becomes the middle class, the bourgeoisie. And so um, that's always been my understanding. And I, when I read this quote from Paul Kengor, it's this economic obsession with Marxism is really an irony, isn't it? Uh, the, the focus on monetary wealth. Uh, and we've just, we've got to knock out the next guy who's richer than us. It, it's, it's really um, just plain old, old fashioned covetousness. That's really what it is. Uh, and it's hard for me not to, not to think that way, not to think in biblical, terms, I think because I'm I'm I've been taught scripture so much my entire life that it is it is just downright plain old covetousness um, that is the that is at the root of Marxism. So I'm very excited about reading this book, The Devil and Karl Marx. Um, it's got some awesome quotes in it. And I hope to come back and share more things with you uh, as time goes on. I appreciate the Less than seven minutes you've given me of your time. Thank you.